Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode of the challenge Gemini version 2. We've performed a brute force directory brute force attack. We found some features, including the registration account. We were able to use it to create a new account, but it's not activated. We need to somehow find the user ID and the activation code that was sent to the account in order to activate our account. That's what we're going to do in this video. Let's get started. Okay, so if we go back, your account is not yet activated. If I click on my profile, what do we see here? Nothing changes, but oh, okay. We have a number here, a parameter u equals 15. I guess that's the ID of the user. That could be the case. Well, we could maybe verify that by logging out and then creating a new user. So that would be under registration.php. And let's call it the hackerish display name, the hackerish. And the email address doesn't matter really. Password, the hackerish. And if I click on the profile, we can see indeed that we have 16 and the previous account was 15. So that means that this is probably the user ID. So let's target the user with ID 15 and go to the validates.php. Was it named validate? Oh, activate, sorry activate.php we want the user ID which is 15 what about the activation code we know it's a six digit number so maybe zero 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 activate the account we see nothing okay let me inspect or you know what I'm just going to run burp suit so the proxy is running. Let's hit the HTTP history tab and wait for our calls. And then configure our Foxy proxy extension to catch those requests. If you don't know anything about that, I encourage you to go to academy.thehackerish.com and there you will find a course that teaches you how to start from zero to actually becoming a penetration tester. Um, it includes way more than just burp suit. Okay, so let's try once more with the ID 15 and let's try with the dummy activation code. We don't, doesn't really matter. Okay, what do we have here? This is our request post to slash activate right click, send it to the repeater. And right away, we notice the same token as we've had in the uh, Gemini version one, essentially meaning that we cannot replay these attack. We cannot replay this specific request because we need a new token that gets generated every time. So that's why now we have a invalid token uh, error and in the response we have a token which we can copy this is the new one and paste it here and hopefully we will get a different response so here we have invalid value instead of invalid token which is good we can use it to try and brute force this activation code but this token needs to be automatically updated for each request. And we've seen how we've had to do that for people who are members of this channel. You can also become a member and uh, see this, uh, this exclusive video dedicated to special members of this YouTube channel. Thanks very much for your support. Once you configure the macro and send the request, you should always have invalid value that's because with the token that we're sending 
is updated on each request automatically using macros. It's a really interesting video. I really encourage you to, to watch it. Now let's run this in the intruder. So right click, send to intruder, and we're going to clear all the parameters and just focus on the activation code. Next, we go to payload type and choose numbers. And we want numbers from zero to 999999. That's because we have six digit number and the step would be one. We don't want to miss any. And the minimum integer in this time would be six because we want to be targeting six digit numbers. The maximum integer would be six as well. And we want zero fractions. So the examples are shown here. Okay, looks good, but we, ne we need to tweak the resource pool. So I'm going to choose a number of maximum concurrent requests, set it to one, and the delay between requests, let's choose 300. And that seems fine, let's start the attack. Okay, we have a bunch of 43, 4, 403 response codes. But the interesting thing is, is that we have invalid value instead of invalid token, meaning that the token gets uh, updated each time. So once we hit the right digit or the right number activation code, we should have at least a change in the uh, status code. So as you can see here, it's trying a bunch of uh, numbers in the payloads column. So once we get something different, we should hopefully see a response code that is less than 403. If we're lucky, the digit code could be near the zeros. Otherwise, we are here for a long time. So let's go grab a cup of coffee and then go back. And we have a different response code which means that probably this was the right six digit code. So let's stop or pause the attack for now. And let's go to the other user. So if we go and choose, please sub one, sign in. We indeed have access to the application as an authenticated user this time. And uh, yeah, we've been able to activate the account using a brute force attack while bypassing the anti c surf token. That's really cool. So as you can see, we have here the uh, username and then the display name, I guess, or this one is the display name and this one is the username. And uh, in the action actions, we have edit profile where we can edit our profile. Okay. What about the export profile? It's taking some time while it's running. Um, let's go back to burp and see what are the requests. So we don't need this intruder anymore. Discard and in the proxy, so we have the profile endpoints. Nothing really interesting here. And we have the exports. Is it broken? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, oh, error failed to load PDF document. Hmm. It seems that this feature is kind of broken. What about the uh, other features? So. We have account settings, which points to the same page as the one we found under the action button, edit profile. Oh, we have an ID here. Can we change that? 16 and doesn't seem to work. Nope. We don't have the info of the hackerish account because we know for sure the ID is 16. So the developer has properly tested for cross account access. 
So what can we do here? Like save the information. What do we have in burp? So that's a post data to the user with this ID. Okay. Just right click, send it to the repeater. Can we like change that to 15? Let's render it. Maybe we could take over the account. Yeah. We still have the uh, account of the same user. So I'm not sure if this is really vulnerable. Okay. What else do we have? So we've, oh, okay. Let's right click, send it to the repeater and replay the request. Now, if I go back to the previous request, the export.php returned a string. It doesn't return a PDF. Okay, that's interesting. In the next video, we're going to dig deeper into that, try to understand what's going on, and hopefully, maybe find a way in. Until then, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the ring bell to receive the video once it goes live.